Здравствуйте, уважаемые дамы и господа. Будьте добры. Uh, good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. We are ready to begin. Hello, I'm Yelena Talstaya, a host at Moscow 24 TV channel and a moderator of our today's uh, panel session, Transportation in Mega City, and Rethinking Future and Approaches to Digital Mobility. And I would like to introduce to you speakers uh, Maxim Leksutov, uh, Deputy Mayor of Moscow, Head of Department of Transportation and Development of uh, Transportation and Road Infrastructure of Moscow. Alan Lushnikov, uh, Deputy Minister of the Transportation of the Russian Federation. Mohamed Mezgani, uh, General Secretary of the International Union of Public Transportation. P Pyotr Katsiv, Deputy uh, General Director at uh, Russian Railways uh, uh, Development Center. Also, uh, Federico Parlotta, uh, Head Partner in Mobility and Chain, and Dim Dimitri Snesser, the Senior Vice President of VTB. So, mega cities uh, put a stake on the opening of the public transport. And Moscow is doing a good progress uh, here. And I would like to uh, pay emphasis on two of our projects. In 2016, we launched the mega project, the Moscow Central Railway, and uh, new projects are coming, Moscow Central Diameters, and we would like to speak in details about this uh, project. So I would like to first uh, ask a question to Maxim Liksutov, uh, uh, Maxim Stanislavich. If uh, we would focus on the experience of a Moscow uh, Central Railway, nobody could expect that we will get to that uh, traffic uh, flow in the first year. Uh, there are other assumptions uh, regarding the central diameters, but I am sure we will have passengers because there is much public interest about that. But everyone wants to ask what will we, uh, the Moscovites, get from the launch of this project? So how can it change our life and make it more comfortable? Thank you, Elena. I would like to say that this uh, project uh, uh, was developed inside uh, the city without the Ministry of Transportation, without the, well, without uh, Russian railway, it would be impossible. Because one, oh, the infrastructure, others uh, can focus on regulatory issues for organizing things like a single uh, multimodal ticket, which we never had before the uh, Moscow Rail Central Railway. Uh, and uh, the Ministry of Transportation helped us. So uh, projects of this scale can be implemented only in case all stakeholders are interested. In terms of passengers and their interests, of course, there were some skeptical voices that said, uh, that tried to prove uh, providing arguments and calculations, uh, software showing that we will have very few passengers, uh, 70 or 80 million passengers per year, but it's, well, no one would create, no one uh, would need uh, the railway, no one uh, will use it. So it was just a waste of time and money. But we had our conservative optimistic forecast with Russian railways. So for today, we have uh, uh, 200 million passengers, which was even slightly better than our optimistic forecast. To avoid describing what people will get. I would like to show you some slides. With your permission, slide number one, please. So this is the total set of diameters. We are working together with the Russian railways. And you see the Moscow Central Railway, the first uh, ring, then uh, the mm, a central line of Moscow Metro and two more uh, diameters, uh, diameter one and diameter two, the acting infrastructure for the uh, suburban 
railway which will not uh, uh, end. So at the moment, uh, the train only goes to the uh, railway station, but it will uh, go through the city with an interval of five uh, minutes uh, to make it actually the uh, on-ground uh, metro. And also, as for the rates and tariffs, we are discussing them with our colleagues from the Ministry of Transportation with the railway, uh, with the Russian railways. So the goal set by the mayor should not be an obstacle uh, making people not to go. Um, so the tariff should not be too high. So the next slide I would like to show you of what we will get in future. So the program for construction, uh, it will continue. It's so the two programs are developing um, simultaneously. You see some new uh, parts of the metro which will be built before 2023. Yeah, so uh, the program is additional to building other rail uh, systems. And the next map with some parameters, the joint work of our uh, with our colleagues and the Ministry of Moscow region, because the end and the starting points of many diameters will be outside of uh, Moscow. So the effects would be huge. So uh, we will have less traffic uh, on the main uh, railway stations and on commuting lines, and uh, it will be a relief for MCAD uh, and other motor roads. And of course, the effect will be uh, about speed. So people will be able to cross the city uh, two times faster. So, of course, we don't expect that uh, we have people uh, at once. Uh, and uh, we are ready to wait for a year, a couple of years. And we believe that transportation behavior is quite conservative, although the experience of the Moscow uh, railway, Central Railway has been uh, more positive. But the team of our mayor, that uh, from the very beginning, uh, we should offer uh, highest level of ser uh, service uh, with high frequency, with new uh, infrastructure on uh, these stations. So together with uh, Pyotr Dmitrievich, uh, so this is our consolidated position. Uh, um, Mr. Pyotr Katsif will, of course, uh, contribute to that. But a question to Mohammed: What's your attitude to such projects and what can we borrow from the international experience in order to finish this uh, project uh, the, of the diameter on time. And uh, thank you very much for the invitation to be here at this, uh, at this forum. Uh, of course, this uh, project and this ambitious uh, development of uh, uh, large public transport infrastructure is to answer mm -hmm. the uh, first, the growing urbanization of Moscow but also of large, large cities in general. We have more and more cities and cities are more and more uh, uh, larger. But also, and this, the consequence of that is the uh, increase in uh, the demand for mobility. There are studies saying that by 2050, the demand for mobility will be multiplied by three. So it's very important that Moscow anticipates this, this demand and is building now the network that will accompany the, the growth of, uh, of, uh, of mobility. And this demand means that we need this large public transport infrastructure. Besides Moscow, there are other cities, there are I take, for example, the case of Riyadh in Saudi. Uh, in Saudi, they are building six metro lines simultaneously. It's the biggest, uh, uh, biggest metro project in, in the world. If you take China, in the last 10 years, they built 100 lines in 10 years. So uh, uh, there are also some emblematic projects like the Grand Paris Express or, or the Crossrail in, in London. So this is a movement. There is a movement towards this large public transport infrastructure. Why? 
because public transport is bringing a lot of benefits to the city. So uh, we have some studies showing that when you invest one dollar or one euro or one, one ruble in, uh, in, in public transport, it, gen it will generate four times more in the local economy. Uh, if if you, when you create one job in public transport, it will lead to three jobs in the, uh, locally in the, in the city. Uh, public transport is four to ten times safer than cars. Buses are four times safer, metros are ten times safer than, than cars. Uh, you, we can say also that public transport consumes three to four times less energy than, uh, than, uh, than cars and, and a, a number of other, uh, other advantages. And also public transport make, at the end, make the city more attractive uh, for visitors, uh, for those who live uh, in, in the city. And we had, the, we had the, now the, the World Bank, the World uh, Cup, sorry, uh, has demonstrated that this, uh, this, uh, this, this, the, 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 the importance of public transport to move all these visitors around in a safe and uh, efficient manner. And if we, we can compare that to the cost of congestion, congestion costs in Europe 4% of the GDP of the gro gross domestic product. So it's, it's a huge amount of, uh, of money. And so we need these this systems, but, but we have challenges. We have challenges. One of them is how to build public transport systems within very short timelines. Because this is the problem, is that between the time we decide to build the system and the time it is put in operation, it takes several years. In Moscow, it is taking less than it is because there is a, there is a political uh, willingness to do that. There is a commitment from the local uh, government in Moscow to do that, and it should inspire other, other cities. I mean, the, 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 the speed of decision-making process and the speed of execution is very important. Another challenge is the, uh, the availability of talents and skills of people who have the, who have the skills to build, to administer, to operate transport systems. This is very important. And now the, the employment market in public transport is a global market. And countries, they compete to attract the skills. So we have to take this into consideration. And another challenge is the funding and, and how to, to mobilize the funds to, for building these transport systems. And one possibility, uh, especially when we develop new systems and we see that the value of land or the value of real estate increases after the uh, 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 operation of this transport system, it means, and we have studies showing it increases between 15 and 40 percent within a, within a radius of 500 meters from a station. The value of land increases between 15 and 40 percent. It means that the land developer, the, the, the real estate promoters, they should contribute to the uh, funding of, uh, of uh, transport systems. And one last challenge is digitalization. We, digitalization is changing our life. Uh, we are more and more connected, and this has an impact on mobility, and it is making our mobility expectations also changing by, because we want flexible transport system, on-demand transport system, shared transport system, and at the end we have this large public transport system, large mass transit, and also on-demand and shared transport. And it's important that we integrate them. It's important that by public transport we mean all of them, mass transit, and the shared mobility. And we, 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 we try not to put them into competition, really to offer the, the citizens a door-to-door -door solution. So we must embrace these uh, this new modes. And, and, uh, and this is important. And coming back to Moscow, there are a number of, uh, 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 in the approach in Moscow, in the projects of Moscow, a number of, of, of elements that could inspire other, other cities. Uh, first of all, is that the transport policy in Moscow is coordinated, is not segmented. It means that there is one authority which is covering all modes, taxis and car traffic and metros and buses, etc., etc. There are only very few cities in the world who have that. Uh, London, maybe Dubai, Singapore, Seoul, and that's all. Uh, so it's, it's one of the, Moscow is one of the leading cities. Maybe the Moscovites are not aware of that but this is an asset uh, in the city to have one authority covering all, all modes. Uh, and then, this is what made it possible to, at the same time, construct large public transport infrastructure, uh, have an efficient traffic management, an efficient parking management, and controlling the parking is very important, because if you don't have a parking place at destination, you are not going to take your car. So it's important that we have this, 
this balance between developing transport and restric restricting uh, car use. It's also this solid institutional framework, as I said, having one authority. This is, this is a, a must. Uh, and, uh, and, and having this integrated approach, one smart card, one information system, one app, uh, one brand for, for, for transport, it makes, the, it, 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 it makes the, the, the transport system perceived as unique by the citizens, and also there is a continuity between the different modes. So these are assets uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, Moscow can use to inspire other, other cities, uh, in addition to the intelligent traffic control system, in addition to the upgrade of the, of the surface transport system, because we speak a lot about metro and trains, uh, but the, the surface transport system is also very important, and uh, this upgrade by introducing new modern buses, new buses, uh, uh, Moscow has the, one of the lowest uh, average age of buses, is four years more or less in Moscow, in, in Moscow which is one of the lowest in Europe, uh, compared to Europe, so it's, it's uh, very important. And as I said, at the end, what is important is having a political willingness to change things and to change them quickly. And the mayor of Moscow this morning in his keynote speech, he highlighted this several times. And, and this is the challenge for other cities in how to do things efficiently and quickly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me add on my behalf that for us, Moscovites, uh, transport uh, is something of good quality. And Maxim, uh, my question is for you. Last year, uh, we celebrated the passengers' year, and you became uh, customer-oriented. So for us, Moscovites now, public transport is something of good quality. So now, when we discuss NCD platforms, so we expect this platform be also of high quality, and we want the platform be good, and we want the trains be comfortable, and want all this to be integrated. Thank you very much. We started with uh, Moscow uh, Central Ring. It was our start, headed by Mayor Sabanian. I think without him, this project would never have been fulfilled. You know, what does it mean? We are in a big city, and we need to have territory. We need to construct new highways. We need to construct new equipment. Uh, so without mayor, it would have been impossible. Uh, actually, this hasn't been a, an easy story, and it is not finished so far. We modernize it every day. And we'll learn on our own experience. So we're trying to find the best solutions for the trains and for the trains infrastructure. Uh, let them be even better than our Moscow Central Ring. We need to have hubs. We need to have changes. We need to have new technologies. For that, we, tr we are now developing a new project. We, uh, we have funding, and I'm sure this will be a unique project. So we have calculated so far, if we have a, uh, constructed all that, we'll have more hubs than in New York. That will mean it will be system number one in the world. Uh, and this is possible and will be possible thanks to the effort of the government. Why couldn't we have done it earlier? We were lacking in the political will. Uh, so our Tsar Nikolai, he tried to do it. Uh, Mayor Lushkov uh, did his best, but he failed. It was not the right time, probably. But Mayor Sabanian did manage to do it. So what we have today is a new infrastructure with changes, with hubs, which makes the life of Moscovites and Moscow guests more comfortable. You remember uh, the f during the football match, it was raining, don't you? 
Uh, so some changes between stations are still uh, on the open air, but it will change. So we will try to do our best to make uh, the transport system as comfortable as possible. Because today, uh, well, we when you have to change from the underground, from the Moscow metro to uh, Moscow Central Ring, sometimes you have to cross the street, sometimes you, uh, you have to go on the air. Uh, it will change. Federica, my uh, next question is for you. Federica, let us look at the international experience. Are there any famous IT platforms which can help to calculate uh, as precisely as possible the passenger flow, for instance? Uh, so it will, so that we do not just think uh, how things may happen, how many passengers will go there, how many people will change here, but to calculate. And how do you think this project can look like? No question. Uh, I've prepared some uh, slides that I try to recap uh, and comment your question. Uh, but first of all, before uh, going to the question, I'd like to give you uh, a very quick uh, understanding. I'm, I work for a, a, an international company that is based in Moscow and here in New York, and I take the opportunity to say, since we have been working here for more than seven years now, that uh, the city has changed incredibly you know, since seven years, and I think back how the city works uh, in terms of transport seven years ago, it sounds like a different city. You know, it was... Uh, nearly a different place, uh, you know, cars could park everywhere for free, the, the surface transport system was not rearranged, the metro lines were not built. So I think a lot of things happened and uh, I think Moscow should be proud of it. And we are proud only part of a couple of those projects. One is definitely, uh, we were part with Jared Walker uh, and uh, Ilya Petushkov for also working on it from our end of the rearrangement of the bus network. I think it's a great, great project. And it's something that, uh, you know, uh, and I say this is a I minute. Mean I think Moscow is not maybe very good in communicating to the world what has been happening here because this is a, a great project. It's being implemented, it's up and running and it changed dramatically the ridership. But we're also proudly part of uh, this project commissioned by the Department of Transport, uh, which really changed completely the garden ring. And it, this is again, you know, I work around the world. When I show these pictures around the world, how it used to be and how it is now, people look at me and say, wow, you know? You know, obviously, uh, it's something that really captured the imagination, and I think you know, it's important without going in self-celebration mode, because if you go self-celebration, you then end up not doing anything anymore. I think it's very important that, uh, you know, Moscow should do some uh, further branding of the achievement that have been done, because I do think they are massive achievements. For what regards the, 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 the ring road and, uh, and the diameters, I just wanted to say that uh, we did a couple of quick exercises based upon also, you know, the request. And I was curious to see, uh, you know, how interesting it was from a just purely uh, standpoint of the uh, catchment area, uh, the, the network. So I took the network and in the office we put it on a GIS database and we basically took the, the area of the city of Moscow, so just the administrative, uh, administrative boundaries of the city, so we do not have a data sets beyond uh, the, the boundary of the city. And we just took a quick note, you know, this is the population distribution. How about uh, checking how many people can access this new rail network, which I think is the new great thing that Moscow is actually achieving. Uh, how many people are actually able to reach this place? This is a very simple exercise. And, you know, we compare it also to the metro, so, you know, to the, your left you have the rail and to the right you have the metro. And basically we look at how many people are uh, uh, accessed by the two systems. And it came along that, you know, the rail we provide connectivity for the people inside the Moscow only, so we do not have the database for the outside connections. And it clearly is an incredible system because inside it provides additional accessibility for more than one million people that do not have access to 
express their connectivity. And if I do this and I start imagining the interchange, uh, and I imagine a surface transport system that connects to the new rail network, I see that, again, comparing metro and the rail, I see that I actually achieve nearly two million additional uh, uh, population in the catchment area of uh, uh, 15 minutes with uh, a bus network. Meaning that, what I'm trying to say with this, I'm trying to say that there is a massive uh, opportunity and, uh, to go back to your question, it's very, very important that we align on world-class city, not only for the development of the rail network, but we are very, 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 very careful for the uh, issue of the interchange. We have to provide connectivity, we have to provide uh, interchange hubs that respond to uh, a system that needs to be uh, accessed uh, seamlessly with the rest of the metro. I just want to talk very briefly about Milan, because Milan developed a, a, a Milano developed a, a system, similar system, it's a much smaller city, it's called Passante, it's a rail network that goes below the city and uh, connects to the metro. And I think a few mistakes were then, then. the issue of connecting metro and, uh, uh, and rails to make it as efficient as possible is crucial for the success of this rail network. It cannot work in isolation, but it has to become part of a broader network. For instance, in Milan, the stations are not located, often not located in a convenient way. The connection, the pedestrian connectivity is very poor, and this in uh, drives to then a lack of ridership and therefore uh, a lesser use of, of the rail network. So for instance, the new metro, the new transport master plan for Milan focus on the interchange hubs and connectivity with the rail system and the metro system and the bus system. So the, one of the key components of the project are the junctions, the interchange, the points in which the different uh, transport system uh, uh, meets and, and, uh, and interchange. And why I'm saying this is because uh, it's just because uh, the interchange hub is an opportunity. It's not an opportunity for enhancing uh, and facilitating transfer. This is also, some, to me, very, very important. It's also an opportunity. It's also an opportunity to. Uh, it's also an opportunity to uh, generate a sense of place making. And I finished. And. Uh, address land value, land value capture. I think it's not just about connecting and generating further ridership, but it's also about bringing to the table a sense of place, and ultima ultimately, to its also drive to land value capture. I think we should have the same approach that was given to the garden ring, to the internal projects, like the My Street projects, for this interchange hub. The same holistic, the same high quality approach that was provided for the previous projects. Thanks. Thank you very much, but uh, let's go back to Moscow Center Diameter Project. So, as it was said, so the plan is to launch uh, the first diameter in uh, 2019, and of course there will be researchers and um, um, researchers will ask uh, respondents, why do you use uh, Moscow Central uh, Ring? Uh, and uh, the answer should be uh, because it's fast and convenient. Uh, my next question is to uh, Dimitri. So is it possible to do it the same with MCD, so the, uh, to offer the same comfortable experience? So I'm representing uh, VTB Bank, which uh, uh, together with the government of Moscow did everything possible to ensure uh, that trips by uh, residents and guests of the city are comfortable. We were responsible for payment uh, and uh, for tickets. So you know, 31 station of the Moscow Central uh, Ring Road, so they have terminals where you can pay contactless cards. You can use Troika card also an e-version of the Troika, which could be recorded to your Android uh, or iPhone smartphone. And we plan to do the same with the MCD. We want people to care less about where to buy the ticket, but having an app or 
uh, Troika card on the phone uh, so that they could just go and pay, pay for the trip contactless. Thank you. Yeah, I'm forgetting that I, I need to put the microphone on. Uh, Alan Varelovich, now I would like to have a discussion with you, because logically we have a question uh, how the Ministry of Transportation supports the MCD project, and what's your opinion on the potential effects, outcomes for Moscovites and those who live uh, in Moscow region, and of course tourists as well. Thank you. So, dear colleagues, yeah, I would like to thank you for your kind invitation to this today's uh, forum. For the Ministry, it's an important uh, venue because altogether we use the example uh, the case of Moscow to test uh, pilot technologies in transportation, in mobility, and we can see how the situation can be changed. So, the way as we discuss it here, so it happens uh, every year, so our ministry is always willing to come and we see the way situation is being changed in Moscow. So, Mohammed already mentioned it, but uh, not the Moscow uh, ring uh, railway, not uh, the Moscow Central Department. Uh, so neither of the project would have been possible without changing the attitude, because the transportation system in the in the city is considered as something single, and the city acts as as an owner in this situation. So why is it? public transport, because Moscow is a big mega city, and uh, so uh, moving around uh, by passenger cars is uh, illogical. So the transportation should be public, should be comfortable and ideally cheap. So the team that was uh, formed and which all together implemented the uh, Moscow uh, Central Railway project. We understand how this project will be implemented in uh, MCD projects. At the moment, it looks uh, as something easy, and it's good, because that's the uh, symbol of high quality work. But please believe me, you have a lot of tiny details in terms of construction, technology, just to link, uh, uh, just uh, the railway from Moscow to Kazan. So first of all, uh, Russian railways together with our ministry, we spent uh, half a year just to plan development of this transportation uh, hub, avoiding the conflict, because in at Kalanchovsk uh, station you have many, many routes uh, go going through this station. If we would discuss the diameters, so why uh, did we support the project? Because from the point of view of Moscovites, so uh, Mr. Maxim Leksutov uh, gave us a very detailed explanation earlier this afternoon. So, as we discussed, also Frederico touched upon uh, the case. So, uh, in when you are traveling, uh, distance is measured in time. So, and uh, the travel distance uh, measures the effect for the passenger. And together with Russian railways, of course, we studied uh, how the project influence for the Russian railway. It's efficient for the Russian railways because the intensity of traffic will grow, the company will get more money for the infrastructure, and it's profitable for the Russian railways. Is it profitable for the carrying company? Of course, yes, because uh, we will have the new rolling stock and the passenger will be able to pay for it. And the city itself, if required, 
to encourage uh, that type of travel will also contribute uh, as well as the federal government. And I might remind you that the federal center uh, subsidizes uh, suburban uh, railways. Although, so this is a really important transport for federal government. And we cannot just ignore this aspect. And the last thing I would like to mention, so we discussed a lot today that Moscow is a motive, uh, an example on what the transportation system can be. So both uh, Moscow Central uh, Railway and uh, the project of federal diameters really inspired us to shape uh, offerings for other regions in our country. Well, you can guess. Of course, uh, uh, this would be the case with the biggest cities, with the uh, multi-million cities. And following a decree of President, we are developing the uh, infrastructure plan, and we will offer uh, the project for developing suburban trains and also developing a railway in infrastructure. Yes, together with Mikhail Dmitrievich. And I hope that you, we will be able to tell you something else on how it will develop in other regions. Thank you. Thank you, Maxim Sanislavovich. I would like to give the floor to you because we will have time to get a couple of uh, questions and answers from the audience. So. Uh, as we discuss the project of our diameters. So I would like to comment uh, on some points just to for you to have an outline from the point of view of a passenger. Because so we are talking about mobility. So I would like you to know that the future diameters will be fully integrated into the ticketing system of the Moscow Metro. The rates is still to be discussed, but we have time, and we will, of course, try to tell you as quickly as possible, and Troika card will be used without no limitation, and there will be possible to do some changes within the system of MCD and uh, Moscow uh, Ring Railway. We have a number of options we are working on, and some colleagues uh, who are here with us today uh, will probably help us. So the, the schedule uh, is our shared position with the Russian railways. So at first there will be uh, mixed uh, travel and uh, the interval between the trains will be over five minutes uh, taking into the consideration the existing trains we will have uh, trains which will only uh, cover the diameters with the five minutes being the schedule at uh, stage two it's also our joint program with the Russian rail railways uh, that we will put some new suburban lines uh, for railways and the trains, uh, there will be a dedicated infrastructure for MCD. So they will only have their own tracks with an interval of five minutes. We will have the new rolling stock. Our carrier is about to start purchasing the new rolling stock. It will be the new quality of our stations. It's also our program, as mentioned uh, by Piotr Dmitrievich. So changes uh, will happen on all the stations. So maybe there will be several stages. But the goal set by the mayor of Moscow and the head of the Russian railways to provide us with a totally new infrastructure. Uh, next changing the routing routes for buses which access the stations so they will uh, collect people and bring them to the new infrastructure to make it more com comfortable to change to the new line and of course there will be the highest possible number to existing uh, 
metro stations uh, and uh, metro stations under construction. So at least this is what I wanted to share with you. So if you misunderstood me, so maybe I uh, tried to, to correct myself. Well, I'm sure uh, that uh, you understood correctly. Uh, I would like to hear a couple of questions from the audience. Okay, what's your name, please? Just one second. Sergei Birukov, uh, Trude newspaper. I would like to say a couple of words about the on ground electric uh, transportation. And I would like to re regret that we, uh, that this system of uh, trolley buses in Moscow is being ruined. And this is actually a question to Maxim Stanislavich. So it's considered that uh, you shouldn't uh, ha have any electrical cables in this city. But I've been to Salzburg in Austria, and uh, uh, trolley buses are fantastic. Because um, so the network is in an ideal condition. So uh, I heard some opinions that el electric buses uh, will replace trolley buses uh, in Moscow. But the uh, cost of one uh, electrobus uh, is the cost of uh, five uh, trolley buses. So I would like to hear the opinion of uh, uh, Maxim Stanislavich about the future of trolley buses and uh, online uh, rail lines. Maxim Stanislavich. OK, yes. Uh, I'm frequently asked this question about the future of the trolley bus, if it's required or not. So, and the distinguished colleague from True newspaper asked uh, me about Salzburg. If you would compare Salzburg to Moscow, uh, I've been there once in my life. In Salzburg, you have no uh, roads uh, with more than two lanes in the city. You have maximum two lanes one way. And I think there is just one, one road uh, going around the city. In Moscow, you have uh, uh, the garden uh, ring. Uh, you have three or four lanes, sometimes uh, five lanes. So if a trolley bus has to move from the rightmost l l lane, uh, when he needs uh, to enter into a tunnel on the garden ring. So it really kills traffic in this city. So to maintain the contact infrastructure requires huge amount of money. So if you would calculate uh, the money a city spends on uh, cables, substations, and so on, so the electric buses, and uh, also the electric buses, we will buy with a contract uh, for 15 years of service. In these years, the manufacturer uh, will commit uh, to fully support uh, electrobuses. So uh, the first uh, electric buses are coming from gas and mass in September. From the point of view of the city, it's uh, an environmentally friendly, without cables, without the need to change lanes. So the government of Moscow uh, fully supports uh, the project for electrical buses, and f electric bus is a new type of uh, rolling stock. And we can talk about the future of the driverless cars. Uh, sadly, the trolley bus is completely standing out of this line. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, uh, Maxim Stanislavich, thank you very much. Dear colleagues, do you have questions? Yeah, because we have an endless number of questions. And while we still have time, uh, I would like to discuss the MCD project from the perspective of a normal resident. So. Uh, you are telling us that you will be able to get to the same distance uh, two times quicker. And we are discussing multiple advantages of the project. But uh, as for me, I would like to take an application and calculate my route from point A to point B today and how it is going to look like once you launch uh, the 
Moscow central details. So maybe we see that story in recent months. So maybe you could add uh, the MCDs to the uh, mobile application Moscow Metro. So this is a good idea. But to get an effect today and to understand the way the diameters will work, maybe we need to integrate these two lines, MCD1 and MCD2, uh, into the application for people to be able, uh, for passengers to be able to uh, simulate uh, the situation and calculate uh, how much time is spent uh, uh, in travel. Yeah, so it's a good idea. It's clear that we, uh, the passengers w would be able to see what would have happened if we would have the diameters in place today. And uh, together with Russian railways, we decided to build a hall where every resident, every Moscovite, every person from uh, the Moscow region and every interested guest would be able to come and see everything related with the diameters. And I'm sure that we are opening a hole uh, in recent months. So we have a territory uh, close to the Ki Kievsky railway station, thanks to Russian railways. And we will, of course, invite you all just to try to understand all the details and future work of the diameters. A question about this hall. Would it be possible to, for Moscovites um, just to vote in that sort of hall or booth? Yes. Uh, until it's not too late, while it's still possible to change and add something to uh, share feedback and uh, to submit some offers and proposals. And we will try to take uh, all reasonable opinions into the account if, in case they are supported by the majority of people. Okay, dear colleagues, do we have more questions from the audience? Uh, if not, then uh, I'm planning to finish. Okay, if we have no questions, uh, let me draw a sort of uh, conclusion. We talked uh, about mega projects. We mentioned the, the launch of the Moscow Central Ring and about uh, uh, MCD1 and MCD2. So the first uh, one will be launched before uh, in two. 2019, the second in 2023, and uh, you will spend uh, less time on traveling. We hope to have uh, mega comfortable platforms and fantastic trains. Let me introduce to you once again our panelists. Maxim Leksutov, uh, Deputy Mayor of uh, Moscow and Head of Department of Transport uh, uh, and Transportation Infrastructure Development. Alan Lushnikov, Deputy Minister of Transportation of the Russian Federation. Mohamed Mezgami, General Secretary of UETP, uh, the Universe. Uh, Petr Katsev, uh, Deputy General Director. Uh, in the Russian railways, the center of uh, Moscow hub development. Federica Paralotta, uh, senior partner in mobility in chain, and Dmitry Snesser, uh, the senior vice president of VTB Bank. I am Helena Talstaya. Thank you so very much and have a great day.